Welcome to another Further Maths tutorial. Today we'll be looking at dominance matrices. If the uh, edge of a directed network moves from A to B, as is the case here, there's an arrow clearly going from A to B, we say that vertex A is dominant over vertex B. There's several different applications for dominance matrices. The one we'll look at today is looking at a sporting competition. So our example is to consider a round-robin tennis tournament being played between the following participants. And we've got Alex, Blinda, Connor, Denise and Aaron, or A, B, C, D and E. Here are the results for the tournament, who beat who. And we are to determine the player rankings from the round-robin tournament. And to do this we're going to use a dominance matrix. So task number one is to represent the results graphically as a dominance graph. So first of all we'll set out the five different vertices or vertexes representing each player. Next we'll connect each of these vertexes or players with the correct arrows to identify which player was the victor or indeed was dominant over their opponent. So A defeated C. So we draw a line going from A to C with an arrow indicating A's dominance over C. A was also dominant and defeated D. B defeated A, so the arrow is directed from B to A. B also defeated C. And finally B also defeated E. C defeated D and D defeated B. E defeated A. E defeated C. And finally E also defeated D. So here we have generated our completed dominance graph. The next step is to create a one stage adjacency matrix which we often refer to as matrix A. And this is a simple process. So we have here a matrix, the outline of matrix, and we've got labelled players A, B, C, D and E along each row of the matrix and players A, B, C, D and E along each column of the matrix. Now, the first thing you note in a tennis tournament, in singles at least, and doubles for that matter, is a player A never plays him or herself. Nor will player B play themselves. Player C won't play themselves when D and E. So they're the first elements we can fill in for this adjacency matrix. Now let's look at each one of these. Player A against player B. A does not have dominance over B because there's an arrow going the other way. They're connected. B has dominance over A. So that's that's A does not have dominance over B, so a zero is entered. A does though have dominance over C because the arrow goes from A to C, so we enter a one. Again, a has dominance over D, so a 1 is entered. And finally, A does not have dominance over E. E, in fact, has dominance over A from the direction of the arrow, so a 0 is entered. I think you get the pattern. So let's look at a complete set for player B. B has dominance over A, so we enter a 1. B has dominance over C, so we enter a 1. B is dominated by D. It doesn't have dominance over D because of the direction of the arrow, so we enter a 0 as the element. And finally, B has dominance over E, so we enter a 1. Let's examine C. C has no dominance over A, is dominated by A. C is dominated by B. It does dominate D, so we put a 1 in because C could beat D. And C is dominated by E, so that goes in as a 0 as well. So D's values go in the same way. The only player that D has dominance over is player B, so that's the single one element, the rest are zeros. And finally E. E dominates player A, so it goes in as one. E is dominated by B, so that's a zero. E dominates C and D, so C and D have got ones. Now we've got a completed adjacency rather matrix for dominance. And here we have it. The next step is to create a two-stage adjacency matrix with the symbol a to the power of 2 or a squared. Here's matrix A, our adjacency, 
we'll just define that control variable which stores it to matrix A. So this is matrix A. If I want to find A squared, A to the power of 2, press enter, and here now is my second or two step or two stage adjacency matrix. So if we were to return, we can see now here is our two step adjacency matrix. Next we need to add A and A squared together to create what we call a dominance matrix. So using the calculator, we've now defined A already, so we can have A plus A to the power of 2. And here is a dominance matrix. And this is the matrix of A plus A squared. It's the sum of the individual elements from a single step or single stage matrix, adjacency matrix, with a double or two step two stage matrix. So here is our A plus A squared, our single step and our double step. Now finally all we need to do is tell you the rows for each player. So player A going across the row, because this represents all A's dominance, we have a total score of 4. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4. Player B has a total dominance score of 9. C2 D has 4 and E has 7. Finally, there's our dominant scores. Finally, we want to rank the players in dominance order. So, the highest score was a 9. It had a dominant score of 9, so that is player 1, the first ranking. Not player 1, but rank number 1. Next highest score was a dominant score of 7, so that is the second highest ranking player. We have a tie for third. Two players had scores of 4 and 4. And finally, the fifth rank is um, our middle player with two dominance points. Let's now tidy this back into the actual players. So, first ranking is the second row of our matrix, A, B in alphabetical, which was Belinda. Second place was our fifth row of the matrix, so A, B, C, D and E, which is E for Aaron. Third place was shared between Alex and Denise, and finally the fifth ranked uh, row, and indeed player, A, B, C, is C for Connor. I hope this has helped understand how we can use a dominance matrix to rank sporting events. Thanks for watching.